Um, before I begin, before I really get into what I'm going to talk about, I have to alert you to something, and that is that the title of this presentation has three words in it, sex and shopping. And many of you may have missed the middle word and thought that what I was going to talk about was sex shopping. Um, so if you thought that what we're going to cover now is sex shopping, that we're doing sex and shopping. The and is quite an important word. And given that we are here in Hamburg, the home of the Reaper Barn, you might have thought that there was some other kind of sex shopping that we might be doing. Uh, we're not going to be doing that this afternoon. What we are going to be talking about is sex. And as a psychologist, when we ask people about sex, if we were to do a survey of everybody in the room now, and we were to ask you about what you thought about sex, all of the information that would come back to me would tell me that you actually think it's kind of predominantly what young people do. And I've got news for you. Young people do have a lot of sex, but so do old people. And Old people have a lot of sex as well. You can see that she's got that look in her eye. Yeah. And it, as hard as it is to realize this, it really is difficult for us to realize this. But your mum and dad, your parents, your mother and father had sex. That's why you're here. And if you're lucky enough to still have your parents alive, here's the even worse news that's really difficult for you to stomach. However old they are, they're still having sex. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is our brain. Sex starts and finishes in the brain. There is some powerful stuff going on in the brain that makes every human being interested in sex. Because if we weren't, then none of us would be here. None of us are here without people having sex, and so our brains have something that really makes us desire and want to have sex, because otherwise the species does not get reproduced. And deep inside the middle of your brain, and this is the only diagram I'm going to show you, so don't worry, deep inside the middle of your brain, and by the way, your brain isn't colored like that in the middle, that's just to help you understand it. You know, if we sliced your brain down the middle, there isn't a green bit or a purple bit. Uh, that's just to show us what the different parts are. But if we look at that little yellow bit and that tiny little kind of blue bit in the middle and the tiny little blue and red bits at the bottom, those tiny, tiny little things, which are basically in line with your eyes and between your ears, so they're right in, the mid right in the middle of your head, and they are tiny, tiny little parts of your brain structure, well, those things are what create desire in you. They produce lots of chemicals that make you want to have sex. The chemicals that stimulate your body ready to have sex come from the middle of your brain. And I've got news for you if you run a shop, if you're retailers. Those chemicals are the same chemicals that are produced when somebody wants to buy a product from you. The same desire chemicals that stimulate us to have sex are the same chemicals in your brain that are produced when somebody wants to buy something. So understanding this is really quite important for us if we want to sell more stuff online. I am making an assumption here. I'm making an assumption that if you are retailers, if you're in the world of e-commerce, that you've come here because you want to grow your business and sell more stuff. Am I right or wrong? You can talk to me, by the way. You can say, yes, Graham, or no, Graham. Yeah? Um, you want to sell more, don't you? So we've got to get people to desire more. We've got to get those bits of their brain, those little bits in the middle, firing out the chemicals in the same way they fire out those chemicals for having sex. Here's a problem. This, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a female baboon. And her face is bright pink. 
and her face is bright pink because her blood supply has increased. And her blood supply has increased because she is ready for sex. Those chemicals in her brain, those desire chemicals, have made her body ready for sex. And unfortunately, baboons can only have sex a few times a year. It's a cycle that they have that allows them to have sex a few times a year. And her blood supply increases. Now, those of you who've seen baboons at the zoo know that another part of their anatomy goes red as well, but I thought you'd prefer a picture of the front end rather than the rear end. So, but it's a signal to the male baboon, because as soon as the male baboon sees that red signal, his brain goes, my goodness, it's time to act. And what happens is his chemicals are stimulated by that red face and sometimes the other end to make his brain push out those chemicals to desire that female baboon so they can reproduce. Now, you might think that's okay for baboons, but it happens in other species as well. When you look at how we try to make ourselves attractive to other people, there are all kinds of signals we use as human beings to make ourselves attractive so that other people desire us. So some women might have makeup, some men might go to the gym. There'll be all kinds of things that we do to make ourselves attractive to other people. And when we see that thing that makes us attractive to other people, the brain of the person who desires that person pushes out these chemicals, but they push out these chemicals in lightning speed, absolute lightning speed. Those chemicals happen so quickly, you're not even aware of, the hap of it happening. You're not aware of the effect that this, this is happening. The effect just happens. There's lots of things that have got to happen in the brain for it to happen. To give you a clue as to how quickly this all happens, uh, here's a picture of Usain Bolt at the 2012 Olympics in London. And I think it's a fantastic photograph because it shows us a couple of things about Usain Bolt that you might not realize. That we know he's fast. Okay, this is a picture of him in the 200 meters, but if he were doing the 100 meters, he'd be pretty much the same. We know that he's fast and that he can do 100 meters in 9.8 seconds or whatever it is, yeah? So he's pretty quick. And you watch that race, you watch the 100 meters race, and it's over before you've really blinked. Yeah, it's all done and dusted. And yet, here we are, look at the clock, 0.5 seconds. That's important to somebody doing the 100 meters, important to somebody doing the 200 meters. That's the difference between first and fifth place. So that half a second is vital to him. But look at his left foot. His left foot is still behind the start line. So half a second has gone and he's still in the start. He hasn't left the start half a second. Those chemicals in your brain are produced in a lot less than half a second, but they have their effect in 0.5 seconds. So the time it takes for Usain Bolt to stay at the start is the time it takes your brain to desire something. And we know when we put people into brain scanners and do brain experiments, neuroscience experiments on them when they're shopping on the internet, we know that those chemicals are produced because we can see it happening inside their brain, and we know when they made a decision. The decision happens, everybody who buys from your website makes a decision above their left eye in part of what we call the left prefrontal cortex. And they make that decision there, and they make that decision, we can see this happening on brain scanners, and they make that decision 0.06 seconds after the 0.5 seconds have happened for the chemicals to have their impact. So the chemicals have had their impact in your shopper's brain saying, 
I really want to buy that. And then 0.06 seconds later, the decision is made that they're definitely going to buy it. So we know that it takes 0.56 seconds for somebody on a website to make a decision to buy a product. Here's the problem. You are not consciously aware of anything in the world until 0.7 seconds. We live our entire life in the past because everything we experience consciously happened 0.7 seconds ago. So if we're not consciously aware of what we're seeing on your website, how come we're able to make the decision in 0.56 seconds before we're consciously aware of it? Your shoppers are making their decisions before they even know what they're looking at. That's important. That's something that we can really get to grips with and do something about on our shops. Most people spend no more than three seconds on the internet, on a web page. The average is three seconds. Now, you'll know, looking at your analytics, that people may spend more time on your website than that. But I have to tell you that several studies have shown us that the amount of time people are spending on a web page is because they can't find what they're looking for. They can't work their way out. They're wandering around aimlessly because they can't see what they want. So you might go, wow, that's fantastic. You know, people spent 90 seconds on our homepage. And yet when we quiz those people and we look at what they're doing and we follow their eyes around the page, they're meandering everywhere. They haven't got a clue. They're lost. So sometimes having a long time on your web page is bad news, not good news. What we want them to do is make a decision really quickly in 0.56 of a second so they land there, click, and move on to the next thing in fractions of a second. A lot of people give up after a few seconds because they're not bothering to look around. They'll go somewhere else where they can see what they want to see inside three seconds. And part of the reason for this is these folks. Facebook, Google, Wikipedia, YouTube, Amazon. These people are what most users of the internet experience every day. In fact, most people think the internet is Facebook. Because 27% of all our internet activity is Facebook. And most people think online shopping is just Amazon. I know that's not good news, but that's what they think. So their experience of the internet it's Amazon, it's Facebook, it's Google. So they expect everything else on the internet to work like that. And when you think about those websites, they work very quickly. When you land on Google, do you have to think about what to do? Do you have to analyze it? It's instant. Type in the search box and move on. So you can make that decision in fractions of a second. You can't do that on a lot of websites. So these people, not only do we as human beings have this desire driven into us by these chemicals that are produced because of sex to make instant decisions, everybody who uses the internet is being forced even further down that route by big sites dominating the web. I thought I'd pause for a second before I commented on this picture, because there's a couple of things I need to talk about here. Um, I just need to tell uh, some people in the room that there is an attractive woman in the center of the photograph. Because there are some people in the room who won't have noticed her, because they've only seen the four attractive men either side of her. And now the people who did notice the attractive woman in the middle are going, what four attractive men either side of her? Your brain is pre-programmed to focus on precisely what your brain wants to see. If you want to see attractive women, you will see them in a photo before you see anything else. And if you want to see attractive men, you will see them in the photo before you see anything else. That means that when people land on your shops, they've already decided what they want to see. 
And if they can't see it, they won't see anything else. So what do they want to see? Because if we know what they want to see and we provide that precisely to them, then they can make that decision in record time. I'm talking here about the whole concept of convenience. Psychological convenience means that we can do something instantly without having to think about it because it fits our pre-framed, our pre-programmed concepts of what we want to do. So psychological convenience for your customers is that when they land on your website, they've got to be able to see what they want to see immediately in fractions of a second and be able to do what they want to do, which hopefully is click the buy now button, so that they can see to do that immediately as well and just do what they want to do. The online retail world is very different to the real retail world, where we can get people to dwell inside the shops, we can get them to do things, we can influence their behavior. We can change how people feel in the world of real retail. If those of you have worked in real retail or you have bricks and mortar stores, you know you can control the temperature, you can control the lighting, you can control the feel of the floor. People always buy more when they're standing on carpet compared with standing on wooden floors or tiles. So we can control the environment. We can't control the environment when people are buying online. One third of all internet shopping is done whilst your customers are sitting on the toilet. That's not really an environment you can control. So we have no real control over their behavior, so the only thing we can do is to deliver precisely what they want so they get it immediately. That's psychological convenience, having them not think. So, here we are. Here is a car that many of you may drive. Yeah? Some of you will drive a BMW. Yeah? And even if you don't drive a BMW, everybody who is able to drive here could drive a BMW. Now, you might not want to. I understand that. Yeah? You might be quite happy with your Lamborghini, but you're, you, you, you could drive a BMW. Even if you drive a Volkswagen, you could drive a BMW. Even if you drive a Ford, you could drive a BMW. Even if you drive a Peugeot or a Fiat, you could still drive a BMW. So we could all drive any car, really, can't we? Could you drive this, then? Uh, this is a three-wheel car, so it's slightly different to most cars we have these days, because they have four wheels. Yeah, so this has three wheels, and for people who are here from Europe, uh, not from the UK, uh, you'll have a slight difficulty with this because the steering wheel is on the wrong side of the car. Of course, it's on the right side of the car. Um, <laughs> um, and, but you could drive it. You'd get a little bit muddled to begin with because what you'd do is you'd go to change gear and you'd open the door, but other than that, yeah, you'd quickly learn to so say, you could drive this car, not a problem. Could you drive this? This is a vintage tractor. You could. It's got a steering wheel, it's got pedals, it works exactly the same way as a BMW. Works exactly the same way as that three-wheel car. So you could drive that, couldn't you? No problem. Could you drive this? This is a little more difficult, isn't it? This is a John Deere digger. This is a bit more difficult. It's got no steering wheel. It still drives forwards and steers. It's got no pedals. So it's a little more difficult. The reason we can't do this is because it's not the same as everything else. Every car in the world is the same as every other car. Don't tell BMW this, but their cars are the same as Ford and Volkswagen and all the others. It's just cosmetic, the difference between them. And the reason they're all the same is because if they were all different, you'd only get qualified to drive one car because you'd have to learn to drive a different car. So they're all the same because it makes it easy for us. It's psychological convenience. You can get in a different car and drive it. Here's the problem. There are many websites that are not psychologically convenient because they all work differently. If your website works differently to another website, then people are in a John Deere digger rather than being in just a different kind of car. So we need every website, every shop, to work the same. And because most people's experience of shopping on the internet is with Amazon, it means your shop has to be the same as Amazon. 
Otherwise, it's not psychologically convenient for people. They don't know how to use your shop. There's also another problem. This is a shop near where I live. And if you wanted to buy some trainers, you could choose any of those. The display, by the way, goes all the way over here somewhere. And then it goes all the way down here. And then it goes all the way around there. There's too many to choose from. Too much choice is really difficult for people. Human beings are unable to make choices. You should only ever give people a choice between three things. Because we can't choose between two things. It's really difficult for human beings to make a binary choice. That's how we ended up with Brexit. So, <laughs> and it's really difficult for, a maker, for us to make a choice with lots of things because we just don't know what to do. Three, so if you want to improve the choice on your website to make it psychologically convenient, only ever have three items on a page and people can make the choice more easily. Now, I know you're going to tell me that Amazon don't do that, but there are subtle ways they do break their pages into three, and we can maybe talk about those a bit later. So make it convenient. Make choice easy for people. Make it quick for people. Here is a site I just, I don't know if this site owner is here. Um, I don't want to embarrass them because there's nothing to embarrass them about, but I haven't asked permission to show their site. But the only reason I, I stole this is because this was on the ePages uh, website as an example. And this is a good example of what I mean by making it psychologically convenient. Because if you look, there's a search box right in the middle. Over 90% of people who use Amazon don't bother clicking on anything on the front page. They don't click on any of the menus. They go straight to the search box and type in what they want. So this does that in exactly the same position, give or take, as Amazon does. And where does Amazon put its shopping basket? Top right, exactly where this page has it. So already, if you use Amazon, you know how to use this site. This is psychologically convenient for people. The next thing I want to talk about is likability. And likability is you demonstrating that you like somebody else, that you like your customers before they get a chance to say they like you. If we continue our theme of what goes on in the world of sex, when people are dating, they're obviously trying to attract each other. They're trying to get those chemicals going in each other's brain. But what if this chap here is talking to this woman and he's saying, well, it's really nice being here in this lovely restaurant. Uh, of course, it's not my usual restaurant. The usual restaurant I go to is more expensive than this one because you know my bonuses are usually much greater, but it's a bit down this month, so I've had to come to a slightly different restaurant, but I've been able to at least to carry on using the Lamborghini, and he goes on and on and on about himself. And if he were doing that, she's just laughing, going, I'm out of here. Whereas if he's talking to her about her, and he's asking questions about what she does, what her interests are, all the kind of things she likes, she's laughing because she's going, He's interested in me. When you show that you're interested in somebody else before they get a chance to say they're interested in you, those hormones, those chemicals in their brain fire away and they desire you. When you tell people all about yourself before they get a chance to know anything about you, they're not interested. Those chemicals are suppressed. They don't come out. They don't desire you. So, on your website, this is what you've got to be telling your customers. From the moment they arrive, remember they're making this decision before they're consciously aware of what's on your page. You have got to demonstrate the moment they land on your page that you love them. Now, I know there are some customers you don't love. Yeah, I know there are some customers that annoy you. Yeah, but yeah, you've got to demonstrate in that fraction of a second that you love them that you're interested in them rather than interested in yourself. When you land on a web page yourself and all you see is, you know, this company has been in business since 1843 
Uh, we've been in the family business ever since then, and we were, you know, great grandfather, whatever, invented us. And then he handed on the family business to whoever you're going, I really don't care. Uh, nobody cares about your business. They just care about what they've come to get, what their brain is pre-framed to get. So you want to show them you love them. So here's a website that shows people exactly that they love them. It's saying, these, when you land on Garment Shop, it tells you these are the two kinds of people that we really like. So if you're not a young man or a young woman, immediately you know this isn't the site for me. Because we identify with other people. When we see other people on websites, we know that the website loves our kind of people. There are far too many websites that have got pictures of products. Nobody's interested in those products. They're interested in whether those products are for them. Now, yes, I know Amazon doesn't do that. But as Amazon, has, Amazon has done that in another way, and it's a massive brand that shows it loves us in alternative ways. But for smaller shops, we need to demonstrate in half a second that we love the people who buy our products. So we need to see those people on those pages because then it shows them instantly, in less than half a second, that this is for them, that you love these kind of people. So that's something else you can do to help trigger those desire chemicals. The next thing is how informative your website is. You've probably gathered we're building up a word here. We've had C and we've had L and we've had I. Um, you might win a book called Clickology. Uh, so then you might be able to work out what the word is going to be by the time we get there in a few minutes' time. Yeah? So informative. How informative is your website? Because people need information to reduce risk. One of the things that those chemicals do in our brain, they make us desire things, but there's another part of our brain going, hang on a minute, this is risky. Yeah. So your brain is going, I'm really attracted to this person. And another part of your brain is going, yeah, but they might be married. So, you know, there's, a, a, there's a, one part of your brain is doing one thing, another part is doing another. That's exactly what happens when people desire your products and services on your website. Their brain is going, I really want this. And there's another bit of their brain going, but look at the risks. This might be more expensive than somewhere else. So we need information. So here's some information. Uh, which, which one of these bananas would you like, by the way? I haven't got any with me, but if, if I were to have a banana, which one would you like? The one on the left, the one on the right? The right, the one on the right? Yeah, everybody vote for the one on the right, yeah? Well, why? Because it looks more appealing, you desire it, yeah? Those chemicals again. So those chemicals are produced because your brain is going, the risk of eating rotten food is that I will get ill, Therefore, I won't go to the rotten food. It means that part of your brain is also going, if this is new information, it's better than old information because it means I've got less risk. So if I were to ask you to look at a website and it said copyright 1998, what would you think? Yeah, are they still in business? Yeah, has the owner just given up? But if it were a website about Newton's laws of physics, they were still the same in 1998 as they were in before Newton even invent, found them. I did say invent them, I nearly then, but he didn't invent them. Yeah, he did, discovered those laws. Yeah, so we want fresh information. So how fresh is your website? How up to date is it? How new has it got? information has it got, and how much information has it got? Because the more information we have about products and services, the more we reduce risk. Amazon have demonstrated this in several studies, that those products they have with the most details sell more than the pro similar products with fewer details. The more data, the more information, the more details. Now, your customers are not going to read it all, but it's helping that part of their brain that is assessing the risk of the desire to be minimized. So the more information you have about products, the more detail you have, the better it is, because then people will reduce their risk level, and when they see it's fresh information, they're more likely to buy. So we now come to C, customized. 
how customized is your website? Because if we look at uh, what Jeff Bezos said in 1998, uh, there's a couple of things to come out of this, but one of the first things is he thought he was only going to get 4.5 million customers. Boy, were his sites set too low. Yeah? Um, and he said that if we have 4.5 million customers, we should have 4.5 million shops. And that's precisely what happens on Amazon. I'm going to do something really brave now. I'm going to show you the screen of when I log into Amazon. Now, this is dangerous, isn't it? Because you're going to see the kind of things that they're recommending to me because they're the kind of things that obviously I've been shopping for. Um, I could limit this by saying we have a family Prime account, so my wife and son could have been buying things that have influenced this. But here's what I might get recommended. Yeah, so that's what I've been recommended. Uh, I'm going to see the questions rising to the top, aren't they going to be? Why did you buy? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. So that's going to be the number one question, isn't it, in a minute? So, um, but if you were to look at your page, every single one of us would have a different display up here. How different is your shop for every single one of your customers? Because we expect it now on the internet. Yeah, there are shops that do this. You can buy this hoodie for a mere £6.10. And this hoodie you can get in all kinds of different colors. You can print it. You can get it in different sizes. You can choose a whole load of different features. Customers now expect this. How customized is your Facebook page? How customized is your LinkedIn page? Every single one of us have a different Facebook, a different LinkedIn, a different Twitter, a different Google. Everything is personal. When it's customized and it's about us as an individual, guess what happens to those desire chemicals? Their concentration goes up even more. And the last thing is knowledge. How expert are you in your field? How expert are you in your products and services? How much do you know about them? How much do you demonstrate that knowledge? Because the more knowledge you have, the more you demonstrate it, the more people trust you. So the amount of knowledge, the amount of authority that somebody displays on their website, the more likely it is that you get trusted. This was demonstrated to me uh, by ASOS. ASOS is the world's biggest online fashion brand. And this is a page from their magazine. And I was speaking at a couple of conferences uh, a couple of years ago, and it was a, a series of meetings, and one of the other speakers was a director of ASOS. So I got to know him, and we were you know, having dinner and coffee and all the rest of it. And uh, he drew me a little graph. And he drew me a graph on a sheet of paper, and I kind of uh, have made it look a little neater than him. But the years don't matter, but it's that kind of order. But when they introduced a blog on their website, their sales went up. They did nothing else. All it's doing is providing extra information about the products they were selling. And what was that doing? Reducing risk. As soon as they'd reduced risk, sales went up. But when they introduced their magazine, when they demonstrated their knowledge of fashion, and remember, ASOS was started by people who were in the advertising business providing product placements to the movie industry. The people who set up ASOS have no experience in retail, no experience in fashion. And yet, once they started demonstrating they had knowledge, their sales went up even further. So how many articles do you have? How much content do you have? How much material do you have that demonstrates your authority in your subject? Because your sales will go up if you do that. ASOS's sales figures demonstrate it clearly that their sales went up as a result of these two significant factors. ASOS now employs more fashion journalists than the biggest fashion magazine house in the world. So the biggest employer of fashion journalists is ASOS. And their magazine is providing lots and lots and lots of content, lots and lots. There are over 100 articles published every single day on their magazine. It's massive. 
And that's why they're a billion and a half company, because people trust them because of their knowledge, amongst the other things. So here's another uh, page I pinched from the ePages website. Um, but this one is full of knowledge. There's information about the history of chocolate, how chocolate, different recipes, what you can do with it. There's a whole load of articles and content and videos and a whole load of stuff showing that they are experts in this field. So you're going to trust them to buy from them because of their expertise demonstrated in the website. So how much knowledge are you showing about your products, your industry, your sector in your website? Because if you do that, people trust you, that's part of minimizing the opposition to those desire chemicals. So, there we have it, we have click. Your website's gotta be convenient. You've gotta demonstrate that you like your customers, that you love them before they get a chance to you. Don't ask them to like you on Facebook. You've got to show them you like them. You've got to be full of information. You've got to be customized to them as individuals, and you've got to pack your website with knowledge to help reduce the effect of the opposition chemicals to desire. If you do that, you'll click with your customers, and they, in turn, will fall in love with you. Hope that's helped. Thank you very much.